was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. And thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Well, that's kind of you to say. Thank you. What's your name, Caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but, uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... Uh, I threw it out the window earlier today. Fair enough. Can't say I blame you. Thank you. It's a terrible song. And Brad had it on repeat all afternoon because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just... Play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? wrote that song for one it gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years <sighs> why couldn't they just request roddy oh forrest scrap the song we have another caller sorry to cut the music short folks callers take priority tonight welcome to 189.16 the scream this is forrest nat forrest Thank God, it's me again, Murphy. Hey, how'd it go, Mr. Dojo? Uh, oh, the killer got me, man. I, uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? I warned you not to. Hindsight is 2020, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn Gleason. You came to the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight. But... Oh, oh, goddamn. I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or... I'm gonna die! Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just... Come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? 
My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street, and Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it. I'm going in. <gasps> oh, my reception is terrible in here. God, my eyes stink. Go to recycling. Recycling. Come on, Catherine. Shit. The plants are up again. I can go shredding or crushing. Which way? Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man. What do you want from me? <laughs> Catherine, go to the crusher. Henderson container. You just get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Well, folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founder, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. Uh, right. Thanks, Teddy. Now, are you... Teddy, you lowlife! This is not the time to promote your damn campaign! 
I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? Yeah, how about the goddamn serial killer? The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and... You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Grab a cassette. We need to play a commercial. We gotta keep the lights on. Play a commercial. Jesus, you know, after what happened with Murphy, I think... Yeah, we should take that out of rotation. <sighs> kind of a shame, though. It is pretty fun. Yeah, I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. I, uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Let's just get to the show. Apologies, folks. We must have left that tape in rotation by accident. I think it's fair to say that's one deal you can skip. But what you can't skip is what our next caller has to say. Caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> Uh, hello. Caller. Who is this? I need the police. 
I'm Forrest Nash. I <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What what's wrong? There's a guy who left to me and my friends. I I think he's killed some of them already. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god, oh my god! You stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this! Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Go to the closet. Okay, I'll... He's here. He's here. He's gonna kill me. Forrest, I don't think we can... Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. You know he's really out there tonight, Jimmy, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just whistling night, man. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in. <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh. Uh. Wait. Oh no. Who, uh. Who are you? Oh no, Ben! <laughs> Everyone, run! You two, what are you looking for? Scott Heather, you barricade the back! As long as he's out there and we're in here, we're safe, right? You bought time, but not much. Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend, we drove out to the old murder house and... Of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Oh, Jimmy. <sighs> okay, okay. It's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Right. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. If only Jeannie were here. 
Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Forced, listen. Uh, we'll see what we can come up with and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... Uh, and... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh, uh, we're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Ugh. These damn kids never learn. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh. They do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks, we're going to work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> You're going to love this next track. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. That's not opening. Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away. Hey, you find anything that'll help us out? Let's just see what we can do. Uh, if you're sure, Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. When you're ready, shut the music off. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, you picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, 
The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Jennifer. <sighs> Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Then it's part four. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Ah, uh, David. Cynthia. And Scott. Hot David. <laughs> yeah, you, uh... <laughs> Spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part five. Trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be... Who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go-karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. And Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Smarter, to the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter signal. Spotter says go. Wait. Lock picker, go. I'll get the keys off you. The keys, Carrie. You need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. You got God. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Focus, you got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right, wait. Get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like you're 
life depends on it. Ah. Oh. There he is. Ah. He's buying it. What was that? It's the whistling man! Drive! Now! Let me go! Just go! Just drive! Oh my god. You're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? <sighs> I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. Don't forget Janie. Her friendship quiz saved the day. Told you she was the best. I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song. For the girl walking home in the dark. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by Just Ricky. Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was this one guy. 
Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. Sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Aw, <laughs> oh, hello, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Max. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate? Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. <laughs> Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. Maxie, sounds like a really special boy. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max... Be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxi. You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. Here comes one of my favorites. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but... It is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Time to turn the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Gary! Hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though we lost Jimmy, and I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. Why am I... Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did... Why let me go? Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe. But why would that stop him from killing me too? After everything he did to... These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, uh, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie.
honest, that's not the song she asked for. Sorry, uh, my mistake. Looks like I got the wrong track there. Sorry, Carrie. I'm sure she'll forgive you. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that, Forrest. We have a caller. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. the girl didn't get hurt thanks for your concern uh, are you in trouble what's on your mind i wanted to ask you again to play my song for us you said you were gonna play it but you didn't your name was dawn right what peggy yes oh well remembered my name is dawn and i wanted to ask you again to play my tune for us long ride home you know the one that peggy said she threw outside the window you must really love that song. If you're calling up to ask for it when you know we don't have it. Well, I, I do love it. And I don't want to argue, but you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to... Crap it. Don, I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's something unnatural about this freak. He's he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will. Forrest? Peggy, I'm I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's gonna be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest. Uh, well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. You'll like this next song. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... All right, I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16, The Screw, with me, Peggy.
not getting in there tonight. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open alone. Here it is. Long ride home. Of course, it locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, or something. That's broken too. Only the best for KFAM. Let's see if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. I should check the fuse box. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Nah, that's not right. Do the fuses add up properly?
Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Bingo! I could probably survive that fall. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive?
Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. God, please let this be the last locked door. What the hell? Peggy is not going to believe this. The beautiful key. I should be able to get back to the studio now. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked behind. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement, made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's, Clive's, next target? That's right. And we've got to find him. You said there are four locations listed there, too? The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help.
How's it going? I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Hello? Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The Whistling Man? Who is this? This is Boris Nash. Listen, the Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it and... Oh, God. It's today. The year I finally let myself forget. I... Quit talking and run! I... I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck... <laughs> Jesus! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? I... I... Is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on. We're getting a call. Hello? Chuck? Chuck! Boris! The whole goddamn gas station's gone up! Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah, damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man, I can't thank you enough, but yeah, I gotta go. Wait, I, damn it, we lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Stream. A classic back by popular demand. This is Long Ride Home by The Barn Finds. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. It's not open. Locked tight. Getting in there tonight. Hmm. The key. Is this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs.
Thank you.